We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Did you know that for every dollar NASA receives from the American public, it returns between seven and twenty-one dollars? Yeah, you heard that correctly. Sure, NASA is expensive, but it's also a huge boost to our economy. Here's how it happens. Space exploration opens our eyes and inspires us as we search for meaning in our universe. It's also pretty expensive. New Horizons, which explored Pluto, had a price tag of 700 million. NASA's Curiosity rover, currently on Mars, ran a tab of 2.5 billion, and the space shuttle over their lifetime gave taxpayers a bill of approximately 196 billion. In 2017, NASA's budget was 19.5 billion. That's a number that some say is too high. But these figures don't put all of the good NASA brings the country into perspective. On top of the jobs created by NASA and the tourism okay. to its locations in Texas and Florida, there's something called the Technology Transfer Program. The goals of the program are to identify technologies, inventions, and innovations that might have some use outside of their original purpose in the space program. Seriously, anyone and everyone is free to use them to start a business, improve a business, and create new products. In fact, the technology transfer program has given us things like cell phone cameras, memory foam, MRI machines, invisible braces, and as many as a hundred safety features aboard commercial airplanes. Dan Lockney, who is the executive at NASA's technology transfer program, describes the process for identifying these potential spin-offs. Every time a NASA engineer comes up with a new concept, idea, technology, material, software, anything new and novel, we take a look at that on average about 16 to 1800 times per year, and we determine uh, how feasible is it for someone else to use it and what application would they use it in? Once we make an assessment of that um, and determine if there's a commercial viability or market viability for it, we then figure out the best way to get it out to the public. There are some fees associated with the use of some patents for established companies, but for startups, those fees are waived. The whole point of the program is to help Americans make money. Now, NASA's mission is still the same, but as Lockney points out, there are still benefits beyond their mandate to be had. We're not investing in space research for the purposes of a return. We're investing in NASA for exploration of the universe. We're in investing in NASA for advances in air travel and um, our understanding of of the planet and our place in the solar system. But what we found is, is these are secondary, even tertiary benefits, and we've determined um, that yes, there uh, are jobs created from these um, uh, technology transfers, and yes, revenue is generated, companies are successful using NASA technology. Not to mention, these innovations have also saved lives. Now, coming back to NASA's budget, which again was $19.5 is less than half a percentage point, 0.4% to be exact, of the United States' total budget for the year. A total budget that also includes some, well, unnecessary things. Like a 2010 report that found the government wastes 930 million every year on unnecessary printing, as much as 175 million on maintaining buildings that have been vacant for years, and it's not as high, but 800,000 on pancakes. So NASA's budget may seem inflated, but there's a ton of benefit. In fact, a technology that goes through the technology transfer program could one day save your life.